Number two then, from the 2006 High Maths paper two, roots of a quadratic. For four marks, find the value of k so that this has got equal roots. Notice straight away it says k not equal to zero. Now normally that would be, if k was zero, well, you wouldn't have a quadratic in the first place. But also if k is zero in this case, all you're left with is six equals zero, which is nonsense. So quite clearly k couldn't be equal to zero. So forget that for the moment. Equal roots means the discriminant should be zero. So you have to make a statement to that effect. Equal roots means, and then either write discriminant equals zero, or b squared minus 4ac equals zero. Now if you write discriminant equals zero, I could just go straight in with, what's the discriminant? Well, that would be the this one squared, the middle term squared, that's the b squared. That's k squared minus four times the a times the c. That should equal zero. Those would be the first two marks. Or you might decide to write equal roots means b squared minus four ac equals zero. But there's no mentions of a's, b's, and c's, so you'd probably put in that case where a being the coefficient of x squared is k, b being the coefficient of the middle term x is also k, and c is 6. And if you did that, that would be the first mark, and identifying those coefficients would be the second mark. And then putting them in, as before, b squared minus 4ac, k squared minus 4 times k times 6 equals 0. Isn't another mark, because that was just the second mark the other way around. No, that would then give you k squared minus 24k equals 0. That's still not another mark, because all you've done is done 4 times 6. Now, how do you solve that equation? Factorise. It's equal to zero, so factorise it. Take out the k and you've got k minus 24 equals zero. That's the best thing to do. Now, that's worth a mark. Now you end up with two answers. If two things multiply to give zero, then either this thing is zero, or this bracket is zero, in which case k is 24. Either k equals zero or k equals 24. You don't get your mark yet. It said k isn't zero. So for your final mark, you have to identify 24 as the answer, but give a reason. It has to be justified. And the reason is, as k is not equal to zero, and that's your fourth mark. Now looking at the marking scheme, there's something here about, it says, a common error, which says division by k. And if you did that, you'd only get two marks. It said if you... From this line, if instead of factorising, you took this line and wrote k squared equals 24k, you wouldn't get this mark. If you then divided by k to get k equals 24, it said you wouldn't get those, the, the last mark either. It said if you took this root from here, you'd only get the first two marks out of the four. Now that is actually, it's best if you just don't do it, you should always factorise. That is a perfectly valid technique. You can divide by a variable as long as you make the statements and consider the cases of what k could be. I can divide by k if k is not equal to zero. So that is the solution when k is not equal to zero. And then you consider the case of k equal to zero, which doesn't apply in this case. There's absolutely no reason why that shouldn't give you the final two marks. That's a perfectly valid technique. But the best thing, of course, is just don't do divide by variables at this level. Factorise. If it's equal to zero, factorise it. Now, there is another way you could do this. You probably wouldn't, because as soon as you saw anything about roots, you would just automatically think discriminant. Get the discriminant down and then make it either equal to zero or less than it or more than it. But equal roots means that if you were to factorise that expression, the two brackets would be the same. Each bracket would give the same answer. You'd have a pair of equal roots. So you could do this by completing the square and arranging so that you've only got a square. So if you tried completing the square in this expression, you would have this. Well, first step is take out that k. So I'm left with an x squared plus an x and leave the 6 out of it. Finishing that off would be, 
Well, if that's x squared, that's just x. If that's one lot of x, that would have to be a half, it would be half that down, in which case that would be squaring it up, because when you square the bracket, you square the last, that would be a quarter. Then, if you've added a quarter to this, and notice what you've, what you've actually done is you've added a quarter of k. So that means you'd have to subtract a quarter of k, so minus a quarter k would produce this. Well, that's just the same expression I'm going to put here, 6 minus a quarter k. Oh dear, both those lines should say equal to zero, since they're both meant to be equations equal to zero. Then, if that's to produce equal roots, I only want the squared part of it, so if that's going to be a square, that means that 6 minus a quarter k has to equal zero. Multiplying by 4 and taking the k across gives me k should equal, well, a quarter k times 4, k equals 24. And doing it this way, you would have one mark for this bracket here for getting down to the stage of that half, another mark for sorting out that constant, another mark here for the statement. Maybe I should have gone with equal roots instead of that. Equal roots means that part should be zero for a mark, and then finally k equals 24 for the final mark. Aye, and a mark off for not writing equal zero in at least one of the first two lines.